Good evening, good evening, everybody. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everyone. Um, this is officially the first video of 2023, <laughs> YouTube video of 2023. So hope everybody had a wonderful holiday. Uh, I know I did. I felt like it didn't last long enough, to be honest. <laughs> so I had a few days off from work, so I was able to, you know, get some things done and relax and, you know, now I got to go back to work on Wednesday. So I still got one more day off. Yay, me. <laughs> All right. So basically, um, I wanted to get on today and uh, bring this to everybody's attention. So this is the first time I've actually pulled a whole entire car harness. Uh, this harness is out of a 1991 or 92 or even 90 um, Mazda Protégé. Um, Mazda Protégé LX uh, automatic. And it's pretty much similar to the Escort GT automatic um, 91, 92. Um, <clears throat> in the, on the Protégé 90 through 92 and on the Escort GT 91 through 92 were the only ones with a standalone um, ECU for the um, transmission. The transmission had its own control module. So, so everybody knows Slushbox, of course. Well, in the later years, uh, 93, 94, Mazda Protégé, and then 93 to 96, Escort GT, all went to the integrated, uh, all went to the transmission being controlled by the engine ECU, and everything was integrated after those, um, after those, at, um, during those years. So basically what I did here is I pulled this early Mazda Protégé um, harness, which has the standalone um, transmission computer. Um, and the whole reasoning for this is one, I wanted to learn how to mess with a wiring harness. I, I've done some wiring, but I've never actually pulled a whole entire car harness out and I've spent a few weeks on this man and yeah it looks like uh <laughs> yeah it looks like a ball of spaghetti right there but I pretty much know where everything goes um where where it plugs in but the biggest pain in the butt was getting this stuff off that stuff right there that's basically what holds it behind the dash and then of course I didn't unloom this side because I really didn't need to but I had to unloom the rest of that so but uh but yeah, only thing I've ever pulled is an engine harness and then I used to use, that's it. That's pretty easy. But this one, you had to pull the dash out. And uh, of course, this is your passenger side harness here. You got a rubber grommet and the rubber, the wire goes through the rubber grommet and then it goes to the passenger headlight. And then over there, so this goes to the, this goes through the firewall to the engine compartment. And then this one, is the uh, driver's side. It's the driver's side uh, grommet, and it goes uh, the driver's side all the way over to the headlight as well. Where's that plug? Yeah, right there. So, basically, want to get on and let everybody know what the plan was here. Um, had a few people asking what I was up to uh, on some of the car on on, on FEOA and stuff. So, um, basically, what I'm doing is I'm trying to. Run a standalone on slush box. So basically all I want to do is I want to do the plug and play. Which this is your ECU pigtails. See, it's only two there. On the other years I mentioned, they got three because the transmission uh, controller is integrated into the ECU. So I hope nobody thinks I'm flicking them off. But, I do. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so it's got two pigtails. Like the five-speed, all the five-speed escorts have the, and all the five-speed protégés have two, two pigtails like that. So Megasquirt makes a plug and play, of course, for the two, the two pigtail ECU, but not the three. So basically what I wanted to do is basically hardwire. My plan is to hardwire the um, OEM uh, standalone transmission controller in with the standalone ECU. So the transmission will be controlled by the um Transmission controller itself, and then of course, Mega Square will be controlling the engine and stuff. So that's my plan. And uh, like I said, again, I wanted to learn about a wiring harness, but I'm gonna tell you what, man, one heck of experience. And I can tell you, there are some spots in this harness that I do not like and could actually cause a problem if anything was to go wrong. So 
Let's see if I can find that spot. I think it's right here. Hold on a sec. Nope, 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 nope. It's right here. Hold on. All right. See that right there? That's just bare wire with a copper metal, or with a copper crimp. And the only, way, only thing that's covering this is that right there. That's the only thing that's covering that. Now, that, you know, this wire here is, uh, I want to say this one is the, whew, I can't quite remember. I don't know. I know I said I know where some stuff goes, but I think that's the, I think that's going to be your starter wires. I believe that's the starter somewhere on the ignition, definitely on the ignition side because you got your heavier gauge wires there. See how heavy the gauge is compared to like, you know, this stuff. So there's definitely heavier gauge here. Um, but I want to say this is the ignition plug. Um, but, but yeah, that spot that I just showed y'all, you know, if anything happened, like if that thing just for some reason is pulling a whole lot of amps or a whole lot of current, which is the same thing, <laughs> um, you know, that thing could burn through that plastic cover and, you know, start burning through a wire harness and cause a nasty fire. So I see why a lot of people do their own wire harnesses. It's a lot safer, actually. You figure from the factory, they wouldn't do stuff like that. But that kind of blew my mind. So I was like, oh, wow. That's crazy. So, um, kind of lets you, um, kind of lets you realize and kind of actually kind of makes you realize, um, what can go wrong in a harness and how it can catch fire. It's crazy. Um, you'd be surprised, um, what 12 volts can do, but it's not the voltage. It's just the current that's, that these wires carry. That's what gets them hot. And that's what too much current will make them overheat. And then, you know, they'll, <clears throat> start melting stuff and then they say you know you got a fire so but uh but basically yeah i just wanted to let everybody know what my plan was with this harness and getting some practice in on it and just trying to you know figure things out and trace out stuff so basically i've traced out all the wires that go to the transmission controller so i guess i'll start so right here anybody that has an automatic transmission in a true protege or a um, Escort GT or Escort LX or any of any of the cars that are 48T powered, um, a 48T, any of the cars that have the 48T transmission in them, um, they came in quite a few Escorts. They came in the second gen, third gen, and they came in a Mazda Protege, uh, 323, um, Protege LX, stuff like that. So that plug right there is pretty common. So this actually goes to the the transmission harness and this is like your solenoids and everything um <clears throat> this right here is also a plug for the transmission i think this is your power um uh, this powers up everything um but as you can see i've i've taped green you know which wires go to the um transmission controller so every Every uh, spot you see that's got green tape is where I've traced out on which wires go to the transmission controller. See, like this. And this, these two pigtails are actually what goes to the transmission controller. These two, these two pigtails plug right into the trans controller. So those two black, those two black pigtails, they plug right in. And see, so you got like, a, like this one here. That's a wire there for the trans controller. You know, this uh, juncture plug here, it's got some, some green on it, there, there, um, the ECU pigtail, there, uh, then you got the VAF, it's also got the green, um, one heck of a trace, I can tell you that much, uh, this one's got a few green wires on it too, so, just basically marking the wires that are uh, the wires that go to the transmission controller itself. So once uh, my buddy Steve Taylor gives me a diagram, ECU pinout on all this stuff, I can figure out uh, which wires 
have what job and why, and then I can go to configuring how to wire it into the integrated setup. That way I can just piggyback off of that. I know some of the wires go through the fuse box. One goes to the um, VAF, then of course the ECU, um, and then uh, ignition switch. And I think that's, and the, um, oh, one more. It's, uh, where is it? Where is it, where is it? There it is. So this goes to the cluster. This goes to that, the cluster and the dash. So it also goes to the cluster and the dash. So, so basically, just want to get on here and, you know, show everybody what was going on or what I had going here. Um, hadn't made a YouTube video in quite a while. I ain't really been working on anything um, escort related, just trying to get some other stuff done since the holidays is going and stuff. But here we'll be cranking back up because um, we'll be uh, getting ready to go to the track in March. So we're going to try to, me and Jasmine will try to get a race in. So I know everybody's been waiting to see that. So we're going to try to do that. But, um, but yeah, man. So I basically wanted to get on, show everybody basically what I was doing. And, you know, I'm learning this harness and picking it up pretty quick. So I guess because I've already done some, some quote of wiring and some diagnosis stuff in the past. But for anybody that doesn't know, so a wiring harness, a complete wiring harness, body harness, goes from headlight to headlight. So like I'm saying... This is your passenger side, and there's the grommet. So the grommet's going to be located. Um, uh, the grommet's going to be located in the fender well. So once you pull the fender well down, you'll see the grommet, and then you'll see the wire harness go through the car. Um, and then, of course, you got another grommet for your ECU. That's your ECU harness. So basically, you just you unplug them from here and here. You unplug these two, and then you got the engine harness by itself. Um, and I always wondered how in the heck the transmission wiring harness there that plugs into the trans, how in the heck did it get the signal from the computer and stuff? But I figured it out. It's through this junction plug right here. That's how it gets communication. So I figured that out. So that was pretty cool. But, uh, but yeah, so yeah, so then you got, you know, that one that goes through the middle of the firewall for the. The engine just goes in the just goes in the engine compartment. That's all your your engine harness. And then this is a driver's side boot will be in the fender well. And then that you know that wire goes out to your trans, your lights, all that stuff. Now I don't have there's a little bit of this harness missing. So basically you have uh, like all right you see right there. So this right here is where your fuel injectors and stuff plug in right there. So I don't have that part of the harness, but you get the idea. <laughs> so, but yeah, I figured I'd get on and share this with everybody. Um, trying to get this going to see if I can get it to work. If, if so, it will be awesome. You know, that way we could actually, anybody that's interested in doing an automatic turbo build can just use the um, factory OEM transmission controller to tr control the transmission and then use the standalone to control the uh, the engine, and you can tune the car. Um, the only thing is, I'm trying to also figure out how to kill the solenoids um, when you're trying to hang the car in second gear. So basically, what I'll probably end up doing is putting some, you know, like a kill switch or something um, on solenoid three. So once it goes from one to two, it can't shift from two to three, and I'll probably shut four off as well. That way, um, you know, it'll hold the car in second gear. So, um, but, you know, just just learning this stuff, man, and, and doing research and learning as I go. So, um, definitely crash course the automatic transmission build, though, because I had never built an automatic transmission in my life. But uh, Slushbox transmission came out real good. So, um, um, oh, update on that. I'm supposed to be getting, we are in the process of getting a high-pressure transmission pump for a slush box so i'll be installing that and uh so that can raise the pressure up a little bit but um so yeah basically want to get on really quick and talk about the wire harness um uh, this is pretty much a wire harness for a uh automatic uh mazda protege from 90 to 94 and a automatic escort gt from uh i'm sorry 
Um, Mazda Proj from 90 to 92, Escort GT from 91 to 92. Uh, that's what this harness is based on. Uh, and all the other years, like I said, anything 93 to 96 on the Escort, 92, no, 93, 94 on the Protege will have three of those uh, pigtails there. It'll be three pigtails instead of two. So, um, and it's kind of cool because actually you can actually tell where the, uh, you can actually see where the uh, computer plugs in because it's the only set of yellow pigtails on the whole entire harness. And of course the ECU has yellow, um, has a yellow female. So can't mess that up. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, guys, I just want to basically get on and show you guys. And I'll talk to y'all about the wiring harness and let y'all know what the plans were, what was going on, stuff like that. So um, I hope everybody um, was able to learn a little something from this. Um, you know, like I say, I'm just getting started and messing with it. And I've come farther than I thought I would. So I ain't gonna lie. When I start pulling apart, I'm going, oh my God, look at all those wires. But I mean, you know, everything is color coded. All your wires are color coded. So you can't, you know, you can't go wrong. But I will say this, I will say this. Um, hey, that's ironic. I, I was talking about my buddy Steve Taylor sending me the uh, the um, ECU pin out, and I think he just sent me a message saying he got me hooked up. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I will say, don't always rely on the color code, the wiring color coding, because it can change color on you if it transfers over to, like say if it like this plug right here, it plugs in, say it could be like, you know, red here, and then it could be green there. So I actually ran into that. So as a matter of fact, I think it was this one. Uh, is it this wire? No, I think it was, maybe it was. Yeah, so okay, here we go. Make it down here so you can see. All right, so if you look at here, so that wire is brown with a black trace. And if you come over here, and it's got pin numbers. So that pin 18, you come over this one, pin 18 again, guess what? It changes. Now it's black with a green trace. So yeah, you got to watch out for that. Always watch out for that because that'll throw you, that'll throw you loopy. <laughs> it messed me up too. So, uh, actually, I had a buddy of mine on the phone helping me. Um, you know, we was talking about wine harnesses. He does them for, for uh, people on the side and stuff. So, but uh, but yeah. So, like I said, always watch your colors because sometimes they can change on you. See, like I say, that one's brown with a black trace. Then, like I say, it goes in pin number eighteen. As you can see there, it's eighteen. And then you can see pin number 18 there, and it comes out as black with a green trace, which comes all the way over here to this bad boy. See, that's the same wire, hold on, I get it. See, it's black with a green trace. So, but I'm going to verify that um, just because that's how I am. <laughs> I'm gonna verify that with my uh, voltmeter. And I'm gonna check the continuity and make sure, um, you know, make sure that's the same wire. So, but appreciate everybody, uh, you know, tuning in. Please like and subscribe. Um, like I said, I'm on four uh, four sources of social media. I'm on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. So, if anybody's got any questions, man, just uh, you know, feel free to message me, hit me up. You know, um, I'll help you as best I can. But like I said, I'm just starting to learn this myself, so. I like to get into this so I'll know how to uh, wire up my own computers and after like, I wire up my own standalone computers and you know get into the laptop of things and be able to start my own car up before somebody tunes it for me or I'll learn my own street tuning whatever comes first but but yeah man just want to get on and share this real quick with you guys and I appreciate y'all tuning in I'm telling you this is a pretty cool experience here because this is the only real thing that I Always ducked messing with cars as <laughs> wires, but you know what? I'm in knee deep now, so I mean, I'm sorry, I'm in knee deep now. So I pulled a whole entire body harness now, so it's it's 
it's rock and roll time now. So, but uh, oh, I want to show you guys one more thing. Hold on, step over this. So for Christmas, Jasmine got me this cool logo made. EOTT Racing Team, built by me. You got Slush Box Girl Power. That's her car. Then you got Donatello, and then you got Raphael. So those who don't know, of course, that's Raphael. That's Slush Box, and this is Donatello. Let me get a better picture down here. That's Donatello right there. Slush Box, and then you got Raphael. So, yep. So that's our our collage there. My little collage of escorts. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh that's the cool sign Jazz had made for me for Christmas. And then there's our level 10 transmission people. They uh they've done great on uh getting us parts and uh helping us out getting that transmission right. So uh you know big shout out again to Pat and Elaine for helping us out on this uh this transmission of ours. So we appreciate that. But uh yeah, so basically, that's going to conclude this video. I just wanted to, um, you know, share this with you guys and let you know what was going on. And, uh, yep, old EOTT Racing Team is getting into some wiring now. <laughs> so, but, uh, but cool, man. Well, I hope everybody enjoy, enjoys the rest of their evening. And uh, I'm sure we'll be back with some more videos as the new year is approaching. So well, the new year, the new year is here. So we'll be doing some other stuff as well. So, um, so thanks guys. Appreciate it. And, uh, catch you guys on the next one. Have a blessed day.